Good morning. So good to be in the house of the Lord one more time and to praise him for all his many blessings, allowing us another day to just think on what he has done for us. Makes me realize that I have been so blessed in this life that no matter what I go through, as long as I have, the song says, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Today, we're so happy to have our mixed choir with us here today as they come and prepare themselves to give us some selected songs this morning. We, we just want to thank you so much for coming out and being with us today. Today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us prepare our hearts to pray. Merciful Father, once more we stand before you as humble as we know how. Thanking you for so many blessings, Father, that you've given to us that we can't count them all. Fathers, we come this day, we come to worship you and to give you the praise and the honor that's due to you. Father, we ask now that you come into our midst, that you go from heart to heart and breast to breast, that you touch us right now, Father, that we can experience you here and now. Father, we pray for those who may have wanted to be here and couldn't. We pray for those who may be on their way, that you give them traveling mercy. We also pray for those who govern over us, Father, that they make the right decisions, Father. Decisions that are pleasing in your sight. Father, as we go through this service, I pray that we realize that we can't do anything without you. And we first turn to you in all that we do. Bless us now and keep us as we go through the furtherance of this service, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Surely we give God the glory and the honor for everything. He has done, he will do what he is doing. The title of the song is, Give the Lord the Praise Because He's Worthy.
To our visitors, on behalf of Reverend Wayne Johnson and the Salon Missionary Baptist Church family, we extend a heartfelt welcome to you, and we do hope you come back and worship with us again. Heartfelt sympathy goes out to the family of Mrs. Thelma Waller, and she is the sister-in-law of Charles and Mildred Waller, and her funeral will be held on this coming Wednesday at, I believe the name of the church is Mount Calvary in Durham. The announcements are, Bible study is canceled for this, noon, noonday Bible study is canceled for this coming Wednesday. We will still have Zoom Bible study that night at 7 p.m., but noonday Bible study is can canceled for this coming Wednesday. Time for Relay for Life. Relay for Life will be held on September 16th from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. and the uh, location will be Huck Sanberry Park. Uh, the deadline to order t-shirts will be September the 11th and um, anyone wanting to do luminaries, uh, the deadline is August 25th. And if you have any questions, please see uh, our new captain, who is Tabitha Elrod. So if you have questions or want to purchase a t-shirt or luminaries, please see Tabitha. From the back of your bulletin, next Zoom Bible study will be held this coming Wednesday, August 10th at 7 p.m. The back to school supply drive, we will be collecting school supplies through the end of August. And we did have a very generous donor who donated several book bags. So uh, the list we passed out last a uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, you can mark the book bags off because we have plenty. And don't forget to drop your tithes and offerings off in the vestibule as you leave today. And for those of you who don't attend Sunday school, you can find the lessons on YouTube. I uh, haven't put them on the website yet because it wasn't working last night. And if you would like to pay your tithes and offerings via credit card, you may do so immediately after service today. Please come to the office. Do we have anyone celebrating a birthday from two weeks ago through today or anniversary? If so, would you please stand? Birthday or anniversary? Okay. Okay, what date? Uh, Birthday? Yep. Okay. All right. Any, anyone else? Birthday or anniversary? Birthday song? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. bless you. Thought for today, I'd rather walk alone than with the crowd going in the wrong direction. Amen. Amen. This will conclude the announcements for this morning. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, sister, for those announcements. I would just want to add one other, um, or one, maybe two. Um, she mentioned that we will not have noonday Bible study on the 10th, but we will not also have it on the 31st. It looks like doctors always want to take Wednesdays to have appointments. So um, the 10th and the 31st, we won't be here on, at noon time. Um, also, uh, I received a call from New Red Mountain that um, they asked us to come in with them to help with, um, they're gonna get a truckload of PPE on the 31st of the month and uh, they want to repackage it and give out on that same day from um, I think we're going to be unloading the tractor trailer about eight that morning and then they'll repackage it to give to individuals uh, starting about 10 o'clock so we're asking our missionaries and those who are interest, interested to come help us 
with this service to the community. Um, corona hasn't gone anywhere. Um, even got other things popping up. So we need to be aware that um, this could be something that the community could, could use and it would put us out there to let the community know that we are out there trying to help in, in, the, in our society. So we ask that uh, those who are able on the 31st meet us at Red, New Red Mountain and we will help them with this PPE uh, distribution. Um, this morning, you didn't get to hear Eric before we came on. And I don't want to cut him out of any musical songs that he's prepared himself for. So if he's got two he wants to do now, we're going to let him go ahead and do those, you know, because uh, I know y'all enjoy hearing him in the choir. So if, if he's already prepared himself to do, uh, and I've cut him off from one, we're going to let him go ahead and do another one and do just two, and then we'll come back. For those who like to get to the scripture early, we're going to Luke chapter 6. So Luke chapter 6, verses 46 through 49, Luke chapter 6, 46 through 49, and we're going to say it's wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. The choir's going to give us a selection or two, and we'll come back with wisdom. Thank you, Pastor. Um, the title of the song uh, is Trouble in My Way. I have to cry sometimes. But I like the part of it where it says, Jesus will fix it after a while. A trouble in my way, trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes.
chapter 6. Forty-six through forty-nine. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundations on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. Amen. Amen. Wisdom. Wisdom. Father, it's time to bring your word. I pray you remove Wayne out of the way and use this vessel just to speak your truth. Anoint the ears of the hearers that they might hear from you and not hear from Wayne. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. In these few words from Jesus, I found it to be wisdom. As I look at the world today, I can hear Jesus saying these words to the people of today. He would say, why call me Lord, Lord? and not do what I say? Why do you claim to know me and you don't love those around you? Why do you claim to have a relationship with me and you can't even speak to your sister or your brother? Why do you call me Lord? And he went on to, to, to compare this person. He said one who truly follows him is like one who has built a house on a sure foundation. And in order to have a sure foundation, you have to dig deep. You have to research. You have to know who you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But too many today want a shallow relationship with Christ. They just want him as Savior and not as Lord. You see, but there's something about Jesus that you got to understand. You have to take him as Lord and Savior. You know, here, here we, we're talking about building a house. When you build that house, you're going to find that the soil sometimes has not been broken before. You got to dig it up. And you've got to find out what's underneath that topsoil. In life, you've got to do your research on people around you. Sometimes they have an outward show that they are good people. But you got to dig a little deeper. You got to find out what they truly believe in. Here Jesus says that you've got to get to the rock bottom of them. You've got to know for yourself who Jesus really is. Right. And you can't do that with just a momentary good time on Sunday morning. You just can't come into church on Sunday morning, get a good shout on, and then don't speak to him the rest of the week. All right, amen. You've got to have a relationship with him that when you're in your trouble, That's right. you don't have to come to him and say, oh, this is Wayne Johnson calling and worry if he's going to pick up the line. If you have a relationship with him, you don't have to worry about when you call upon his name. Amen. Right, amen. You, uh, you know, that's the thing. I, I remember when my dad was alive and I would call him 
he would know my voice different from my sister or my brother. And as soon as I say, hey dad, how you doing? Oh, all right, how you doing, Wayne? It's something about a relationship with someone that you don't have to worry about them knowing you from someone else. That's right. so, so here he's talking about building this house upon a rock, being rooted in this foundation. You know, that, that verse of scripture is saying about a tree being planted by the river of water. You know, have you ever seen a, a, a tree, the roots? Now, we've seen some bad storm blow over some trees. And there are some trees that don't sink their roots really deep. But then there are some that will go really deep. And, and, and those who go really deep are hard to get up. But see, what it is, they're, they're searching for water that living water. And, and if they can't find it at the top, on top, see, not the problem when you got trees that are placed re with really a whole lot of water around, they don't have to put the roots in deep. They, they can just, just sink the roots in and that's it. But see, if they didn't have water, they'd have to send them roots down trying to find water. So, so sometimes the lack of water is good for a tree. Because it forces them to say, go down deeper. And see, that's the way it is with us. Sometimes we need to go down deeper. Because in this life, you're going to get tried. And you need to be rooted in Christ in such a way that no matter what wind blows against you. And, and see, the, and think about it now. The storms of life cause that tree to grip even stronger. It blows against him. I, I've got a tree in my yard. And it's two trees that have come up like this. And one of them was leaning towards my house. So I called a guy with tree trimming service. I said, what do you think? He said, um, yeah, I think you're right. If a bad wind come in here, that one's going to your house. I said, what do you think we need to do? He said, we need to trim it so the weight would go the other way. I said, well, trim it. You know, and that's the way it is in life. Sometimes we're leaning in the wrong direction. And God has to go in and trim us. Because we're leaning where we ain't got no business. And we have to get rid of some things in our lives that cause us to lean in that direction. So that we can put our roots down and pull ourselves back up. Here he talks about this, this house. But think about people in life. People of the day. They're not rooted in God. They're rooted into the things of this world. And if you take it away from them, they go to pieces. Too many are rooted in getting likes on Facebook. Having a TikTok. Doing all these different things. And <laughs> it, makes, it makes me wonder sometimes. What can be on their minds that they would do some of the things that they do? Have they lost all respect for themselves Amen. in order to try to get famous? Mm. What, what popularity calls you to do some stupid stuff? Amen. You know, I'm, I'm talking about wisdom today. All right. Because my wisdom, the wisdom that he's granted me says that because of who I am and who I represent, I won't let nothing in this life cause me to bring shame on his name. You know, things gonna happen in my life that might cause shame to be on my name, but I don't want nothing to come against God, to come against the name of Jesus. I want my name to be right so that his name will be right. Because when people look at me and pick me out, oh, you're a preacher. You know, and it made me think about it. I know we've all heard this story about the bishop in New York being robbed. Okay? You set yourself up for circumstances around you. If you walk around with $100,000 worth of jewelry on, you letting every crook, thief, whatever you want to call them, in the world know that you're available. And he's not gonna care whether you're in the pulpit 
or in the liquor store. If he's got the opportunity to come and rob you, he's going to do it. Why would you flash all of this before the people? Now, us with our small congregation. What if I go out and buy a Rolls Royce, drive it up and down the street? You're like, how is he getting all that? Well, those who are not in the church are going to say, well, you know, he robbing them folks. <laughs> you know? I want to represent who I serve. Yes, yes. I don't want to be above them. I want to be among them. Amen. And if being humble, see, and that's the thing about Jesus. Jesus laid down his royal robes to come be among us. Amen. That's wisdom. That's knowing who you're serving. I can't serve you if I'm up on a pedestal. I got to be among the people. And if I'm among the people, that means I've got to look like them. You know, that was the thing about shepherds back in the day. People didn't like shepherds because they smelled like the sheep. Because they were out there among the sheep. They thought nothing of them because they stunk. But think about it now. If I'm out among who I serve, I need to look like you. I don't need to look like a king walking among the peasants. I need to be like the people I'm with. Because we don't want to cause envy or pride, strife, any of those things in the body of Christ. In these two descriptions Jesus gave, he's saying that a man who builds his house upon a rock, that house would stand even when it's being beaten upon by the winds and the waves of life. He said, but the one who doesn't who doesn't invest himself into the foundation, doesn't come in and dig out the loose gravel and put it upon rock, who puts it on sand, can be washed away. And I wonder how many lives today are basically on sand. They're not based, they don't have that rooting, that, that grounding in Christ. You see, when we were small, we were brought to church. We didn't have a choice. You got up Sunday morning and you went to church with your family. Nowadays, they got the babies telling them what they gonna do. How can you lead if you got a four, five-year-old saying, I ain't going to church? You can't lead nothing. First of all, you got to start leading in your house. Right. Here in this scripture, he said that the foundation that's built upon the earth against which the stream did beat, immediately it fell. If we don't have our grounding in the word of God, we will take on the characteristics of all of these different religions out here. I was watching a detective show the other night and they ran across a guy who had started a church and he laughed and he told him, he said, I took a, a little of Confucius and a little of the Muslim and a little of the Christianity and he said, I took a look and I put them all together and he was into all this astrology and all that and had made him a church. Come to find out the guy had already been arrested several times for fraud and all like this. But in this world, we got people who want to mix up everything. It's as if they put it in a blender and took it out and said, here it is. But we serve a God who says, I am the Lord. There's none before me and there'll be none after me. He's one who has set the standard and says, I will give you a way back to me. You see, all of these other religions and things, people are trying to work their way back to their God. 
But our God says that you can't work your way back. You can't. It's beyond you. But what I'll do is I'll sacrifice myself for you. And in giving his son for us, he's given us life eternal. He's given us peace. You see, in the Sunday school lesson this morning, it was talking about peace. It talked about going to sleep at night. But if you can't go to sleep at night and you're worried about all these things that are going on, it's time to give it over to Jesus. Lord, you can handle it. I put my trust in you that no matter what happens, you've already prepared a place for me. You see, that's what faith really is. You put your total trust in God that no matter what goes on from day to day, that he's already provided for you. You know, what does the song say? He knows my name. When he puts your name down in his book, you don't have to worry about him going back and saying, no, no. He knows you from the beginning and to the end. And see, once we give our life to him, we don't have to worry. He takes away the fear. There is no fear in our God. One of, see, I admit to you what I, I've got problem with. I got a problem. I, I, I get up every Sunday morning saying, Lord, what do you want me to say? And as I'm getting ready to go, Lord, any time now, <laughs> any time now, Lord, Man. But he said, you go, uh -huh. and I'll stand up in you. That's right. You don't worry about him being there. You put your trust in him that he brought you this far. Amen. He's not going to leave you now. That's right. If he took you from there to here, he's going to be with you to the very end. That's right. So that's when I get on my, my high horse. Right. And I say, I'm going. Amen. The wife says, you ready? I'm, no, I ain't ready, but I'm going anyway. Amen. Ready or not, here I come. Because he said he'd be there. And if he's there, I need to be there. And if he's there, I'll be ready when I get there. When you build your house on a rock, you take that wisdom that God has given you and you use it for what he has assigned you to do. Just like this thing where we're going to go help Red Mountain. We all often ask him, what does God want us to do? We need to realize he'll put people in our way That's right. that he wants something done. That's right. We often said, no, no, that, that couldn't be it. Go ahead and do it and see what happens. Amen. You know, you, you often, what's my gift? Just keep on working. Right. He, he'll show it after a while. Right. He'll use the simple things. Sometimes we want to be the big show. We want to be the, the one giving the message or the one singing the solo. We, we want to be the one out front. But don't you know the little things that go into putting things together matter? That's right. Amen. There's a convention going on in v Richmond, Virginia, where they had for months planned for this convention. It's just like if we were to say we're going to have a big conference in the next month or two, it'll take several months to get it ready. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody's not going to be on the stage. That's right. But all those who work behind the scenes right. to get this thing together, from mopping the floors to washing the windows to getting the place in order, right. all of them were necessary, That's right. were a piece of the total package. So don't think your little gift is a little gift. Your little gift is an important part of the whole package. Because what they do around here, just so I can get up on Sunday and just say a word to you, is priceless. Because I can't run around and do everything. I've got to depend on them to turn the lights on, to cut on the air conditioner, to make sure the place is clean. So all I do is just step in. <laughs> all I do is step in. But that's all 
I'm needed to do. Because everybody has their gift. Everybody is gifted. You might say, well, all I can do is sweep a flow. Praise the Lord. Amen. You keep it clean in here. Yeah. You might say, well, all I can do is maybe bake a cake. <laughs> Praise the Lord, I love cake. <laughs> it doesn't matter what your gift is. Every piece of it is part of the foundation. And once the foundation is built, there comes another level to be built upon. And we are all part of that foundation. We're all here trying to get people to see Jesus. So no matter what your gift, use it no matter what it is. You say, well, I can't sing, but you can walk the aisles. I can't walk the aisles, but I can speak to my neighbor. I can give to the poor. I can aid in helping somebody in the weeks to come. We praise God that he's given us all of these elements to help build his church. But it takes wisdom. It takes a discerning eye to know that I might not sing like the angels. I might not preach like the greatest of preachers. But my little bit adds to the whole pie. We're all a part of this. It takes wisdom. God bless you. The title of the song is, He Keeps On Blessing Me Over and Over Again. Give your heart to Jesus. The most important thing you can do in your life. You know, I get out of my bed and I look back over my life and I think of all the good things the Lord has done and I can always sum it up in a word of a song that goes something like this. He keeps on blessing me. about independently we live on nothing but his grace yesterday is gone but tomorrow he holds out his hand saying to us he will make a way we all
truly he keeps on blessing us over and over again. Amen. God has truly been good to Salome. Amen. He's been good to me. And see, that's the thing. I take it, to, it's a personal thing with me. Amen. It, it, it's gone beyond just talking about how good he's been to somebody. He's been good to me. Amen. He's been good to me. Amen. Better than I've been to myself. Yeah. So, so it's, it's good just, just to realize what God has that's done right. for right. us and has kept us all these years. That's right. Mm. Yeah, he just, he's amazing. He's amazing yeah. that God would use someone as wretched. Woo! Amen. He yeah. said, That's my child. Yeah, mm. yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Well, as we prepare to leave this amount of privilege, we, we ask that you keep our family, our, our church family, and all those that you come in contact with in your prayers. Because we're living in a time now when it seems like this is a time of, of evil. You read and you hear all of the bad news out there. But I'm here to tell you the good news. That Jesus is alive and well. Amen. And he has prepared a place for us. Amen. And that one day we will see him. And I want to see all of you there. Amen. Thank God for you and for all that you've done. We pray that we'll be able to get together on the 31st and, and help the community out by issuing out PPE. But most of all, I hope we get there to fellowship. You know, we're gonna wear masks, we're gonna keep our distance, we're gonna do all the safe things. But we as the body of Christ have got, get, get, got to get back to fellowshipping. You know, I'm amazed at how many people are doing all these other things that they were doing before the pandemic, but coming back to church is not one of them. You know, it, it, it's as if the scripture is fulfilling itself. You know, they needed a reason for this great falling away. And, and that's apparently what is being used as an excuse. Oh, the church is dangerous. No, it's not. It's no more dangerous than that arena with 50,000 people in it. Amen. Or the Coliseum over there having all these different uh, 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 shows and comedians and everything come in and they're having a packed house. It's no different than that. But no, we don't want to come before God. That's because we don't want to give up our evil ways. We need to turn back to God. That's why all the things that are happening in the world are so bad now. When people reject God, he lets them over to the evil. So we need to turn back to God. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us stand together as we go to God to be dismissed. Hmm? Can't hear. Oh, sure. Yes. At each and every opportunity, we need to open the doors to the church. The doors are always open. They've been open for over 2,000 years. But we want to give each and every one of you the opportunity that has not given their heart to Jesus Christ. Yeah. The opportunity to come and, and give the preacher your hand, but give God your heart. You know, that's one thing. I'm not about, I'm not about trying to build my own kingdom here on earth. I want to bring people to know Jesus. And if you know Jesus, you don't need nobody else. Amen. You don't need me, but you need Jesus. Amen. All right. If all hearts and minds are clear, to the everlasting Father, to one who knew us before we knew ourselves, to the one who's able to deliver us and keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger, to him be glory, honor, majesty forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May his face shine upon you. God bless you.